Would you sign my, would you sign my copy? Peter, please. You can have that, actually. I've got a few. You want me to sign this? Please. Three parties, one please stake. God, no. What am I signing, signing up to? Signing up to this, are you? Well, Ramson. You keep that if you like. Good no, 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 it's all right. <laughs> Short at the Bilderberg meeting. Free speech. Bilderberg meeting? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bilderberg group? Yeah. Perfect. Quite okay. peckish. Can you tell us about Bilderberg, Peter? All right. What goes on at Bilderberg, there's Peter? There's cheap Bilderbergers over there. Thank you very much, sir. Do appreciate it. Who's your camera? <laughs> <laughs> What about Bilderberg? Bilderberg Greek? What goes on at Bilderberg? Are you at the next Bilderberg, Peter? What's the next venue for Bilderberg, Peter? Spain. Scotland. Spain. Spain. Is it Spain for the next Bilderberg? What about Holly Green? What about Holly Green? Who's Holly Green? Holly Green? Google Holly Green. <laughs> Okay, so how, we'll see how it will work. about the fact that you can disconnect an, an internet connection for an entire house for the actions of one member of it. That's, well, that's enacting a punishment on the other students in that Maybe. house. Well, of course it is. How is that not suspicious? Or if somebody hijacks the punishment on the Maybe a bit of a warning to whoever's doing wrong to sort themselves out. I don't think that's something. And the other students who've done nothing wrong, what about those? They've got to sort out their the But you agree that they are being punished for something that they haven't done wrong? You don't think, do you think that's a future fair for all, really, if you're facing people who do nothing wrong? I don't accept what you're saying. I think that we've got to uh, do enough to, uh, to, uh, to protect people's property and property. Do it. Do it. Go. And you better do it. 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 Do you really want a new world order, Peter? New economic order? New political order? What is the new world order, Peter? Would you explain it to us? No comments, obviously. New world order. No comments. Does that mean you're part of it? We'll take that as a yes. The people know. The world that maybe some people dreamt of at that conference back in Bournemouth when it looked as if maybe history would end, that liberal democracy would triumph, that free market economics would slowly progress and we'd have a new world order. The transatlantic partnership was never just the foundation of our security. It was the foundation of our way of life. It was forged an experience of the most bitter and anguished kind. Out of it came a new Europe, a new world order, a new consensus as to how life should and could be lived. Groups such as BRIC are openly promoting a new reserve currency, which is a conglomerate of Brazil, Russia, Indonesia, and China. Get everyone in the whole world using one currency, uh, which some people think that's a good idea. Russian President Dmitry Medvedev recently showed off a sample coin of the new world currency at the G8 in July of 2009. We have also agreed today additional resources of one trillion dollars that are available to the world economy through the International Monetary Fund and other institutions. This includes 250 billions from special drawing rights, the reserve currency of the IMS, drawing rights that will be issued 
to countries who are part of the International Monetary Fund. I think a new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. The head of the European Union is also calling for global government. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. Gordon Brown has called for a world constitution. We now need nothing short of a world constitution for the global financial system. Both Gordon Brown and Barack Obama had been groomed to be the next Anglo-American spokesman for this new world order after Bush and Blair stepped down. Here is Gordon Brown in front of the CBI prior to him being chosen to become prime minister. And it's only now that we can begin to understand that the world order that globalization brings and what it's going to look like. But what does the new world order mean for countries like ours who are looking to succeed? And the question for us is how we meet and master all these challenges to ensure that Britain enhances its competitiveness in the process and realize, realizes what I believe is our destiny of success in this new world order. A new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges for the future. President Barack Obama has also espoused similar views on globalism. Here he is in Berlin, Germany in July of 2008 in what media have dubbed his new world order speech. Well, there have been extraordinary scenes in Berlin tonight as thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. The Democratic presidential hopeful laid out his vision for America's place in a new world order. In this new world, such dangerous currents have swept along faster than our efforts to contain them. And that is why we cannot afford to be divided. No one nation no matter how large or powerful, can defeat such challenges alone. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way, the one way, to protect our common security and advance our common humanity. That is why America cannot turn inward. That is why Europe cannot turn inward. America has no better partner than Europe. Now, now is the time to build new bridges across the globe as strong as the one that binds us across the Atlantic. Now is the time to join together through constant cooperation and strong institutions and shared sacrifice and a global commitment to progress to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Barack Obama also became the first sitting president to ever become the chair of the Security Council for the United Nations, which only further cites his allegiance to world government. In an era when our destiny is shared, power is no longer a zero-sum game. No one nation can or should try to dominate another nation. No world order that elevates one nation or group of people over another will succeed. No balance of power among nations will hold. The traditional divisions between nations of the South and the North make no sense in an interconnected world. I think it's past will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. The globalists who know that Obama is going to promote their uh, plan want to make him uh, such a superhero that nobody will question what he's doing. He is very much a product of the system that he is now technically in charge of. Obama alone, or the Democrat Party alone, is not responsible for his massive rock star uh, status. It's been done by the media. This establishes that Obama is an unapologetic globalist who holds no one nation above another despite its policies. Perhaps we should move towards a society more like China if that's the case. After all, on the 60th anniversary of the communist Mao regime takeover, the Empire State Building, once a proud symbol of the United States, was lit in the colors of the Communist Party halfway across the world.